Welcome to the Performance Formula with Jody Martins. Welcome to the Performance Formula podcast. It's uh, it's so cool to have you here. My privilege, boss. Thank you for having yeah. me here. Um, I think we've sort of known each other a little bit here and there on and off uh, over the last couple of years. And, and I feel like this is the first time we're actually going to get to really talk. And so I'm really Absolutely. looking forward to to picking your brain a little bit. Um, and I know you've produced some cricketers that have played at high levels. And um, uh, I, you, you, you're in a different part of the world where cricket gets taught a little bit differently and it gets played a little differently. And so I'm, I'm here more to learn than, than, than anything else and to gain hopefully some of your wisdom. Let's go. Yeah. Um, Bijou, so I, I want to start the conversation with, um, you know, if, if, if there was like a, a formula in your mind for performance, if, if we were to imagine that they were, right, what do you think would be important for the athletes that you work with, cricketers? What, what do you think would be some things to consider that, to be part of, say, a formula for performance? The first thing I will consider is like one day should be comfortable. There should be element of trust in the dressing room. They should be secure there. Like if they play for the team and they're going to they're going to fail, it's okay. They try. I I particularly would be a guy who is looking will be looking at the process and the effort rather than the outcome. So I don't be worried about a failure. The player with me will also be sure that a failure is not going to be something which is going to lead them to be benched or some sniper mark on them or their effort. That's the main thing. Yeah. Are you, are you, I, I don't know if you're a bit like me, but do you scream from the sides or not? No, I hardly. Like at a game. I used to. Yeah. I used to. I used to. Yeah, same. As a coach, growing same. up, coaching the state teams, like I wanted to micromanage everything. Like where the spinner should be exactly five yards to right, five yards to left. No, I don't want the left hand from this end. I want the off spinner from this end. I don't know. I realize we are just a support staff. It's all about the players. And we are, we, we are privileged to be there watching them grow. And you can't, you can't support beat them. The thing mm. is, if you're going to, if you, you have to decide whether you want a tamed circus tiger or a tiger who is going to be ferocious enough to hunt down any prey in the jungle. You decide. Yes. Yes. No, and, and I love that. And that's why I say, I wonder if you were like me because I was exactly the same. When I was younger, I was also screaming and shouting and doing everything from the side and, um, you know, I, nowadays I just don't do that anymore. What led you to the realization about that? Like, what is it? Was there like a moment where you went, ah, oh, shucks, I, you know, this is actually not that good. And they, they doesn't have growth that doesn't happen in a moment. It happens over a period of time as you mature, as you watch a lot of matches and you, when you reflect, you tend to see that. When you're taking the back seat rather than right to remote control, things were very smooth because you've done all the preps. You've done everything. You're run through all the routines. You've gone through all this mass scenarios, everything. And once you cross the line, it's for them to react, read, react, reflect, read, react, reflect, process, act. Mm. That's what they should be doing there. Read, react, reflect. Interesting that you use the word, um, Maybe explain that. Like, what is reading to you? What's reacting? And then what's reflecting to you? Reading is like probably, I am, I, as a captain first, I put a spinner on from a particular end where I knew that the patch of breath, I'm hoping it will go straight. I'll have a keeper, I'll have a slip ready. And the batsman is wise enough. He doesn't fall into the lock. So I, I read into it. Okay, he started reading my plan now. So I reflect, I am tired of the gap. I start reflecting, what do you do now? Do I switch the bowler over? Or I ask him to come around the end, come around the wicket, or switch a different length of trajectory? That is my process, thought process going on. Then again, I went through the, go through the process of doing that. As a coach, I'm watching the play from the sidelines. Okay. When the break comes or I send in and out, boss, well done. That is a good thing from your part. Probably like, uh, you could have, uh, you've done much more than what I thought you could. This was what I. Okay. Um, so what I what I'm getting is I'm going to put some of my own words so that like reading is the awareness to have the awareness that I'm making a plan and I want to execute that and I have the awareness on how is it actually playing out. I'm reading the game. 
So, reacting, I'm not sure if I'm clear on that one yet as you used it. And then reflecting is almost like strategizing. So you reflect through, you think through, uh, okay, this is not working. Again, there's an awareness this isn't working. Okay, what's what are we doing next? Reacting in the sense like when my plan, when my plan doesn't work and when the best friend keeps taking the Austin up or runs, so how do you react to yeah. the situation? The reacting uh, comes through the process of reflecting and coming through that. Yeah. Do it. Do, I like do, that. Do no, I like this. And I t I'll tell you why, right? I've been in some change rooms where we do the preparation. We go out to, um, we go out into the game. And then like the players play to the plan. And then only we, they wait till drinks and then drinks cup. And, and then only the coach sort of goes, hey, you know, what's happening here? What are we busy doing? What are we busy? And they go, oh, shucks, yeah. And so, so they're not really doing the reading part really well. So they can't really be reacting. So the problem is, yeah. uh, I found during the, uh, I always tell myself, and my favorite part as a coach to the player is, there often is more time than you actually think there is. Mm. You don't have to rush things up. You get enough time. And when you think, uh, the ideal cricketer slows down its thinking process. Close things down. So you break things down. You can analyze better. Yeah. That again stems back from what you said initially about being aware. If I am aware as a batter, right, I was a lot of Jody bowling. Uh, Jody is generally bowling short of length. In main wicket taking delivery is the ball which comes into me. So this is his plan, sir. This is what he'll be trying to do. As a batsman, I am aware of it. So and I'm, and I'm generally, then I'll be aware of like what the field is, uh, is a field at point, a left hand or a right hand, uh, small things, which are which the best field that I'll be watching. I'll be watching a lot of, so I try to watch games of you, you as a bowler, as a team, try to find how hot fielders are there, who more mobile fielders. So I know where my first run is. If I want to get off there, I just push the, push the ball and where should I push the ball to? Small thing. Do you find, and I don't know, right, that maybe I'm textured, my thinking is always textured by one, how I used to coach, two, seeing other coaches in South Africa coach, especially at academies and things like that, and I know you've got an academy too. Often the work that we do in the nets is very technical in nature, you know, it's like fixing a shot or fixing a bowling technique or how do you sort of practice this stuff? How do you, or is it more you leave it for the games that we talk about the stuff as we go to the game? Or what's no. your strategy with that? No, with that, when I try to teach something, probably like a cover drive. Let's talk about a cover drive. Basically, my belief is there is only one drive, and according to the line of the ball, you play on drive, off drive, straight to the cover drive. I agree, <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. If I want the ball to be hit to cover, cover it, right? Uh, so what I do is, one is a technique. You learn the technique well. So cover it simply as a longest stride length towards the ball. Then, once I learn the technique is ingrained in me, I do a lot. One is technique, then it's a whole game. I play a lot of balls. Throwdowns, machine ball, feet, whatever it is. The third and most crucial part is the identity. When I play a cover drive of an off spinner or a leg spinner or a fast bowler, or a fastball or swinging in a swimming. This is the identity. This is a very crucial, most crucial part. So, when I want to train for identity, I set up songs even inside the nut. The most you're going to play the cover, right? The bowler will be targeting exactly at the same way, but the thing the difference here, the moment will be there. So, how do you counter? That's your identity. When you challenge identity, when the identity of a player is challenged through such terms, and if his technique is rooted in himself and he's facing enough balls, He'll be able to make the challenge. That's a good player. A Virat Kohli cover drive of a Lexa, the fast spinner, or spinner, and a fast bowler will look the same. Thank God, through cover. Yeah. You have to work on that. That's that part of the game. Can be all done in the next two. Yeah. I, 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 you know what I like so far about your thinking is that it's very simple. Um, I, and, and I think that fits with sort of... I. I would be very much along similar lines, but at the same point in time, different, right? I might use different words, but I, I love what you explain there. So it's like learning the technique first, 
then the volume, you got to increase the volume. And then you learn the decision making essentially around how to use the shot against different bowlers, different conditions, different situations, etc., yeah. etc. Et you can yeah. say decision making, you can say constraints, but I prefer yeah. to say that, I, that, that determines the idea of a batsman, like how good am I am a cow driver against a left toss spinner yeah. or an off spin. Probably yeah, I like how you use. And I like how you use that word because I think the identity is everything. It's the starting point, right? If I believe I can cover drive, if I think of myself, not even believe, if I think of myself as somebody who can cover drive versus I think I can't, I'm not that type of person at an identity level, then that will have a big impact on how you play the skill. And so I, I love that you position it in that way. Actually, and the thing is, and the thing is, like once you start giving the players the faith and the belief to have their own identity, hmm. down the line is going to fail. I'll take give you an example. There's a kid playing for India now for Sanju Samson. Hmm. Probably good in you know, them. It's got a century like in South Africa. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Not a duck to agree. Yeah. Yes. So the, kid, the, kid, <laughs> the kid came to me at eleven. Age eleven. At thirteen, he was so good. At 14, you put him in the first class say, as a spin push, Kerala. You play in the first class, bring you trophies. It's a right turner. He left us in a boulder ball. He went for the shot, missed, got out. So there's a huge post water. The cricket officials, everybody came. They were sitting myself for drivers in the hot seat and send you the board. How could you play that shot? That is not mm-hmm. all. They're responsible. Then the question comes. No. What will happen if you get a similar ball in the second wing? He said, I play the same shot, but I'll whack it better. <laughs> that was the identity and building. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's a cool story. That's a very cool story. And I like that because it says that even at a young age, a player like him understood himself right and so I, that's why i love that you use this identity word because it leads to how well do you know yourself how right. well do you understand your own game some people are really good drivers against fast bowlers but maybe against the spin they it's something that they're not that good at yet and it's a skill they might have to still develop their identity in but if they don't know that then they keep trying to drive the off spinner and they keep getting into trouble as an example you know and so that, i love that's I love, why I- that's why I keep using the word INT because the INT is always constantly evolving. Yes. Jody, yes. 10 years ago, then and now is very different. Me, if I the line, probably if I use down the line, I'll be different. Your INT is constantly evolving. And challenges is uh, what makes you evolve. Mm. Yeah. And challenges, failures are more necessary, I believe, than success. Okay. I mean, explain or explain that a little bit more. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, but I want to see where you go with it. A success can or probably lead you to be a little complacent. You don't prepare much, but as if if you a single failure, you'll know that you have to reassess. They always say, "Why do you want to fix something which is not broken?" But my belief is that why can't you make this better? Why can they make this better? So, okay, I'm a success now. There's like, they, 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 I believe that human being generally is a lazy person. Okay. Unless you're driven or motivated. Your drives can be different. Your motivation can be different whether you're motivated intently or you want to gain something or it's for your feeling. I get up and train every day other than Sundays. Sundays is church day. I'm a Christian. My belief is very... Something which is very strong for me. Other every other day. There were days when I had COVID, a serious COVID. I used to fall on in the bed and do my hundred push-ups. My yeah. wife used to say, "You better die." But I said, "I'll die a fit guy." So they what? So failure, failure is something. Uh, I don't know. Like it is, it is a demon which is going to crush you unless you run away from that. You equip yourself to face it better. Success is a very warm, soft pillow on a rainy one. It's good. You need that too. But not all the time. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Yes, yes, my thinking on it, uh, where I say I don't think I'd disagree with you, but it would be interesting to see where you go with it. My perception is that we need both. Absolutely, we need both. Yeah. 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 So when we succeed, and both can be equally good for learning, because when we succeed, 
we can learn how to do more of that. And when we fail, we essentially can learn how to do less of that, which makes us better down the line. Correct. Correct. But it, when, how many success, uh, successful innings or a successful match so this is in a good fourth part of what have we done together? Okay. But a failure is all more discussed. I've been in like, I've been lucky where God says to be in very different rooms. I was in different coaches from a Jack Alice as I had coached to with Vasil Nathanam and Simon Katish. Uh, to Trevor Baisley, Muttai Marli, then VVS Leshman, to Ricky Ponding, to W. Raman, to we all these players, uh, coaches I worked with. Everybody has a different coaching philosophy. But success is like, okay, we got it right, let's go do it again. Failure is like, ah, okay, this is what we could have done. With. So why not try to find out what we to pick as a successful unit? Yeah. Most yeah. successful, the dressing room is happy. The vibe is different. The meetings are over like this. Yes. Yes. So it should be different. I know, we are failed. But we are going to find out why. We are going to do it different. Okay, all winning now. Okay, we won very well. Okay, let's see. What do you think, Judy? What have you done good today? And what can we do better? Yeah. And so I think what you allude to there is super important. It's that we, maybe I'm going to say it in different words, but it's like this idea that we're always learning, essentially. Yep. Right? So if we're succeeding, yep. if, we, if we're succeeding, well, we can learn from that success. And yes, when that's we're failing, that's never nice. It doesn't feel as cool. It's not a happy team. <laughs> but we can also learn from that. And I, I think if, I don't know if you find this, but I find like a lot of cricketers, they're not good with failure. They, they're not very good with that. They, they don't want to fail. They try and avoid it. Yet failure, like if you take the best batters in the world, they succeed. If you take 50 as a benchmark in test match cricket, the best players are successful between 30 and 40% of the time, meaning they Correct. score 50 or above. So you're going to fail more often than not. But if we have an attitude of learning towards what we do, and that's primary, that's the most important thing, then it doesn't really matter if we're failing or winning. We're still getting what we want, which is the learning at the end of the day to so become the best you, that we can be. That means so all the time you're focused on the process. Yes. Rather than yes. like what happened. Did I, then the question is like, did I bat well? Yes. Was my plan for a bowler A, B well? Did I execute it well? As a bowler, was hitting the right lengths. So then, that because that that's the that's the best formula for growth. Yes, because you're not worried about the end. And you're putting your still you put in your effort in. Now you're going to reprocess and try to find out how your effort can be better. And yeah. if you do that yeah. correctly, the result is going to take care of itself. If you were and as you work with cricketers, is there specific things that you do? Like, have you got some strategies or something like that that you use as a coach to help them learn better? Yeah, I, I learned it very late. Like, uh, I learned that a conversation in a very, what do you call, trustful atmosphere leads to better questions later. Second, in conversation, you have to know how there is, for, for example, uh, again, we use that cover drive because cover drive has been consistent. So the kid comes to me and say, Coach, did you see the cover drive? She was good. That means the kid is more tuned towards being visually, mm. it's more tuned to his vision. So whenever I tell, tell something, I try to throw in my video, demonstrate something. Kid, another kid comes and says, oh, the ping of the bat is so good. That means he's more towards the screen. Mm. Another kid comes to me and says, the, so the sound of the bat goes, then like a crack of thunder, then like I can talk to him more. So these mm. small things, mm. these small things can do, then I know like, okay, he's, we are on the same way then. Then, I, uh, most important thing, I have to coach the person, not the athletic person. Mm. He has his own, so even the, I had, I won't, I won't discuss the name, he's one of the biggest names in world cricket. This particular batter was going to a very bad patch during the IP. And he was so down. 
I was with him with him for one season. I used to text him like, "No worry, buddy, you're the best in the world." No, no, that I'm not going to be paid for any team. And he turned out to be one of the high performing players for the winning team of that year's World Cup. So at that day, in the biggest stars with all the bravado they showed, they have the fears and insecure. And when you are there for them at that point of time, without criticizing them, they got enough strength being stuck on their back, but being honest with them, mm. honest with them, telling both probably this is what you can do. You earn their trust. Mm. And when yeah. the trust is there, session is good. Yeah. I love your little example there of using visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and to be very aware of that with your cricketers. Personally, I don't use that a lot. I tend to try and just cover all those bases with every kid, video them regularly, show them. Uh, I find that integrating, that would be my strategy, integrating all those things more regularly, consistently. I find that it helps a little bit more. So it's about the sound and the feel and the visual of it, you know, rather than just focusing on one. But I, I, I do love that you coach with that in mind. I think that's such a cool thing that we often hear. We sit on a coaching course and we'll hear about visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or I don't know if those are the words that you learned those things with, but then we don't actually go away and apply that in a coaching sense. And so. I love that you just gave an example of some theory, right? Some theory that you get in a book that somebody talks about learning. You know, there's a, some people are visual learners, some hear by sound, some learn by feel. Some learn through language, you know, by reading something, they actually learn. And so I love that you give an example of how to actually use that theory, that it's not just a thing that sits in a book on a level one or level two coaching manual. But it's something that you actually listen for and you're aware of as a coach. Like, okay, how's this kid arriving at me? What are they actually talking? What words are they using? Are they explaining the sights? Are they explaining the sounds? Are they explaining the, you know? Um, and, and so, yeah, I think that's that's pretty awesome. When you, when you, yeah. Well, you very, can go. Very post, there are kids who are like five-year-old and they have guys who are playing for a night in in, I got a very small space where I coach. So is, we run it like semi-free now because I took my VR from my department so I get these guys to buy the balls where they play with actually. Other than that, no fees. So there'll be one next, there'll be five-year-old kids learning their skills and there will come in the IPL side coming and rolling saying, hey, coach, look at me, what do you do now? Mm. So I believe that as a coach, working with the national team is very easy a pushy job. It's very high profile. People love to be there. But the actual pressure you get is like when you're there with somebody, 10 year, 11 year, 12 year old working with them. That's when the actual learning takes place and then you can influence somebody's destiny. Oh, I love that. I, I And I agree with it. So I always say whenever I go, get involved with the with a academy or in my own academy in the past, um, I used to love coaching the five-year-olds. I absolutely love coaching them because I'm like, that's the place where you can influence. Because by the time absolutely. they're nine, if they've had some person coaching them for four years, and even most coaches are well-intentioned, maybe they taught them some wrong stuff. You know, Maybe that coach is not that skilled. Or maybe it's just a dad in the backyard and they're busy teaching their son some stuff. To change that at the age of 10, if you've had five years of something that's maybe not as effective, and so I love working with young kids because you can influence the mind very early on. You can you can sort of really mold the cricketer from an early age where if they're older, they've already been molded. And now you pick up the problems which you've got to then Absolutely, get yeah. rid of at times. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. What's that like coaching a five-year-old and an IPL player at the same time? Like that must surely be a bit of a challenge. For me, no, because like that's been something which I've been doing all my life. Mm. I give this five-year-old five -year kid probably more important than the other guy. Today, same thing happened. One of the guys who's playing for state now, doing really good, left-hand spinner. I've been working on a track and twinging in a little bit. He comes to a place for Kerala. It's a long stay. He comes from the furthermost corner. It's like 14 hours by train. Stay in oh, wow. a place and comes to train with me there. So this guy, 
was was watching something that happened. He wants to talk to me, and he's there. I said, wait. I spent like more time with the small kid there, and the kid was so happy. Then I talked to him. Like, not that I'm not disrespecting him, but he knows I'm there. But the kid doesn't know. Mm. The kid, the moment of what do you call it, absolute importance and focus, I give the kid night nice stay in his mind. I had people that I believe is my, my one of my strongest tools as a coach. There's a guy who's got a call from a guy in Switzerland, a Malu guy. Malu is somebody like Malayali or Kerala-like or Slanko, where I am from. He's saying he's to, to call, he called me this like I'm Sijo, I'm play. You won't remember me properly, but you have done a camp in now my village, small place, like uh, 15, 16 years back. I still remember how you made me feel. So sure. that was something where I was blessed. Like I mm. had it in me inherently that I knew that every human being did not. Every kid coming to you probably won't be the next, what he called, a, a rock star of world cricket. But kid is a person. You treat him with love, respect. And the way kid is going to be a very, going to, going to go up there somewhere and he's going to influence a lot of lives. So he yeah. picked those people with love and respect. Do you find that, and I don't know, like um, in India, right? My sense is that there's a lot of poverty there, similar to South Africa to a certain extent. In, I've been in South, but in, yeah, a lot of poverty there. But and I'll tell you why. Why cricket is such a big hit in Indian, Indian psyche? India is like, I can compare it to an American dream. For a young African American, a black, he's got three routes to go. To be an icon, star and success. Baseball, basketball, boxing. In India, there is only one route, cricket. And I see success stories. I, I know what Hardik Pandey was and is now. Okay. I know Yasasvi Ji was and is now. Okay. I know Sanju Santa was and is now. All these are few sectors. So this drives the market. Yeah. Can they, you when, can you give a little bit of insight into that? Because I think sometimes, I mean, I read a couple of books on this, and it's the idea is that sometimes like tough conditions early on, where it's not the fancy gym and the perfect cricket nets and um, the clear, you know, cleanly cut grass where, where things are maybe a little bit rough and rugged. Those are often the places where excellence comes from because it changes or go... shifts like the inner drive, you know. So what's that like in India? I can quote from my own, my own place. It's a very good. We are just uh. three broken necks. We repeat uh. it now. So nothing. Just, uh, just strip off. Synthetic, we, we, early we had a jute mat, we just torn all the time, with patches all over. From there, past the first class side, we play so Kerala to train there, even now. Five played IPL, three played junior India, one is still playing senior India. It's the process. It's the program. And it's the endure. You have to be dedicated, disciplined, and very astute, string smart, survey. Cricket is not played on the 20 yard, it's played in the 6 inches between your ears. You use what is here very wisely, you can. Yeah. Uh, those are wise words, eh? Those are wise words. Like, what would a. What, what, I mean, you hear something like a Jai Swell, right? Uh, and that he's like this big success story. And I like to try and understand because in South Africa, we have quite a lot of poverty too. But there's a difference. It, 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 I don't know, does Jaiswal come from, if we had to use him as an example, does he come from like a very poor background? Very poor background. For example, Sanju Sanjay is from poor background. But I'll tell you, Jaiswal came to Mumbai, he slept in the tents on the ground. Some guys tell what you call the local street, uh, street side stall, help them up and practice and became a star. But even becoming a star, we had the emerging India camp. The, the best place in India all were both together, like Tilak, Tilak, uh, Tilak Varma, Jay Small, yeah. Yash Jul, all this place were there. That was one of the coaches. It was done by the National Cricket Academy. So I have my dinner seven done. So Jay Small is the only guy who used to come at seven. He used to ask me, like, Coach, 
Can I bat? If you come down to your place, can I bat for hours? Only <laughs> focus is batting. Only focus yeah. is batting. And he talks cricket. Nothing but cricket. They are mm. probably more talented players. For I'll give you another example. Pratisha. Mm. Yeah. I never he has got more talent in his one swing there. Then probably five players playing for India to win. Not serious in this. He also came from a struggling family. Okay. He's got Zillian in the Bangalore. He was sent out from the Mumbai first class team. Because we are not turning up for practice. And this, and I had messaged him, like, I call him Choto. Choto means small guy. Where I know him since he's a kid. Like, I have the freedom and I really love that kid. I love him from my heart. So I met him, Choto, we have to do it right and all. And even Greg Chappell, Mr. Greg Chappell sent him an open letter, like, and that's a huge hangama because Prati and Bhatale was a huge party going through the night. And then with the girls. <laughs> that's so I, I, yeah. So, I, what it boils what it boils down is not the poverty. It's not your situation. Basically, it's who you are inside. Mm. How much do you want it? How much you, are you hungry enough for that? Probably in mm. South Africa, they still not having been sold a cricketing dream yet. Mm. In India, for yeah. the men, it started with the 1983 World Cup. I mean, we won the World Cup for the first time. There was zero money in cricket. And for the women, probably it started with the 2017 World Cup, where the women had a dream run lost in the finals. As part of that journey, to the I know up and goes. Uh, the disparity in pay between women and women was so much at that point of time. Yeah. yeah. I, I went with the under-19 team for the World Cup and Asia Cup. We won the Asia Cup, lost the World Cup. Still, I was trained, like, for example, I got 10. Okay, 10. 10 of what all it is, I was trained. For the women, we went to the finals. We were only as if I was trained one and a half. Aish. <laughs> but yeah, after, uh, two, yeah. after, after 2017, everything changed for women. Right? Now, women cricket are e- earning as well, as equally as the men. Hmm. So it's a perception. Probably South Africa has not done justice by cricket. They are not sold cricket well. They, they hmm. should send it to every ghetto, every place that cricket 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 is the one thing which can take you forward in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's that was exactly my, what I was thinking. Is that if there's this extreme poverty, where would a cricketer in India get kit? Play, like a bat and pads and gloves and that sort of thing if they come from a place like that because that's that's in South Africa I think the dream for a lot of cricketers in the more poorer rural areas would be football it w- or soccer it wouldn't be it wouldn't be cricket but that's also a game that's a lot easier to sell because it's a ball that's all you need if you're playing in the street you don't need the fancy shoes yet you just need the ball you know and you need some space where I think a big thing in South Africa is the equipment that holds us back at times in those areas. That is very true, right? Uh, I, I, I was part of the Kerala Cricket Association in my province. And there was this guy called Mr. T.C. Matthew. He was a secretary for a long period of time. So when he started up, we had a meeting brainstorming, like what to do. Why is Kerala Cricket not going forward? So we decided we don't have enough coaches, trained coaches. Right now, we are probably the more, I more highly trained, highest number of trained coaches in India. Then we went for the ground. Then we said, equipment. When we went with team, uh, went with the teams, good solid town, right? Again, town, right? Thang in the two going away because the bad is in the season called. So the yeah, association the decided, good. so the association decided for every, every, we started running these academies around. Every kilo of product, every kit, oh, every kilo came as product with a full quality kit. And every kit coming into a state team was given a top quality kit. And if his bath gets broken, bring it back to your association, we'll give you a new one. Hmm. We kept that going for three years. Now, the BCCA steps in. BCCA starts paying even an under 16 player in lakhs. Hmm. Lakhs is 100,000 of rupees. And so the cricket does a very well paid. If you come into a state side, it's just sorted. Everything is sorted. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And probably what, what, what South Africa can do, 
you may uh, most of these major cricketers should talk to their sponsors see you can't help 1000 people at a time but you can help one guy right he steps in the contract with sg when he go back gets 5 6 millos talk to friends get all the broken back back repair give to five people five quality back done yeah start of a chain reaction the people don't understand the power of one okay mm. you need to have just one person you yeah, can't could world, be the next player that plays for india so you don't know you don't know sure i mean i i think that's such a that's such a cool thought right is that i mean i know cricketers that i coached that have racks in their house like a their parents make them a wooden a thing out of wood to put all their bats on all their old bats get stacked next to each other and this bat i scored so many runs and this bat i and and i like you say so i can imagine this kid's got a whole wall full of bats you know maybe there's 10 or 15 bats on the wall you the buddy and i suppose yeah i i suppose it could be okay one day you play for south africa maybe you the next donald bradman right and you got all your bats great yeah but for the most for the most part most cricketers are not going to use that equipment again you know and so never again. why hold on to it why hold on to it when you could technically just pass it on and you never know you could be the start of a fire in somebody else that ignites them that gets them and then next minute yes so, this cricketer out of a rural area you know myself and one of my friends um russell i don't know if you followed any of those conversations where we spoke a lot about the proteas through the world cup and um we sort of starting a new series now where we're going to talk a little bit about the spirit of cricket but we spoke about these sort of problems in our country at length about all sorts of things you know uh, and and I, i never think we really got into the nitty gritty of say something like this where it's uh, it could be as simple as just we start giving away our old equipment for one me as a parent to go straight. repair to go repair a bat doesn't need a sticker I go into it you know connect with a club that's in a rural area and go give you know like I think the more that can happen yeah the better the better off I used to do that at the club I was at I used to collect equipment and at the end of every season I would phone a different club in our area that was part of sort of in those rural areas I say have you got a have you got a bucky have you got like a big car because I've got equipment I've got 15 helmets I got 20 sets of pads I got so many gloves I got 10 bats I want to just give it away and we sort of collect from parents and then we would hand it out but I'd imagine if that gets done in mass in South Africa you know so it's not in one club probably that's almost can... like how it sounds what you guys did it was organized from the top you know it was coming from through the Kerala Cricket Association then I think you could make a significant difference probably that's what you can sell to you to the clubs in your province each clubs like try to look for a club it is like down on funds down on sponsors help help one club yeah help one, one club yeah the, you all like when will do the old jersey will do your old spike will do yeah because they have nothing at times you know yeah yeah so sure, we've weird or we've veered off the conversation a little bit yeah but i i think it was pretty cool um so we've spoken a little bit at the start you said what's important right from a performance point of view was trust the process the failure like is there anything if you think say batting bowling fielding i know you coach fielding quite a lot is there like in each of those specific things that you think okay batting this specific thing like if a batter can nail this thing right then that makes them that that's a big part of performance in bowling fielding like what what would yeah in batting my thing is the batsman should know they go plus uh, like if i am sure that if the ball is in this slot it's going to go it should go then the yeah, question comes like what, what what do you do with the other balls in t20 you would try to work it for a single in a red ball cricket in outside your line of your left eye leave it be hmm. yeah simple keep things simple bowling my theory as a bowler uh, for for a bowler is like you should know what is your length what is your length what is the stock ball if i wake you up at 2 o'clock in the night you run in and hit it hit a ball at that length you should be able to hit that length 9 times 10 that's just 
stop mode that's your length right so when you set your field of the nine fielders probably six fielders are for that stop mode the other three are for the various for yeah. the plants you yeah, yeah so you have you should have mastery over your stop mode hmm Fielding, you should know like where you're going to be good at. I try to uh, classify my fielders into three groups. One are the hunters, the intersectors fielders. The line fielders are the gatherers. They run around gathering the ball. Mm -hmm. And every team are unlikely to have a few guards who can't move very well, but they're very good in mm -hmm. stationary. And I can tell them, as a fielder, imagine two dynamic circles against you. One is your circle of influence. That in that circle, you probably stop every ball, and 80% of the ball you'll catch. And second is a smaller circle around you, which is a circle of dominance. You catch every ball which is hit to you. You stop everything which is even hit like a rocket towards you. So if you, if you can improve, increase the radius of these circles, so as a fielder, you tend to get better. And and the and I imagine the fielders in the in the old team. As circles. So if you can work on getting those circles bigger, the gaps become narrow. Hmm. That's my theory. I like that. And the, on the on the batting part, when you spoke there, I've never thought of it this way. Never ever. It's not going to be what you said, but I've never thought of it this way. Maybe it's what you meant, and my brain understood it differently. The different formats only changes how you approach the good balls because the bad balls always have to go. I'm the under person. I've never thought of this up until up until this moment. I've never thought of it like in the simplicity of that. That in in T Twenty cricket, the good ball you get a one off, and if you get really good, you can find a two off that. But the bad ball still got to go. In fifty over cricket, the good balls get rotated and maybe defended. It's okay to defend the odd one. But in, and in test cricket, they just get defended flat out. You're not even going to attempt Definitely. to do anything with them. But the bad ball in test cricket has still got to go. The bad ball in 50 over cricket has still got to go. And I, I love what you say about the cricketer, they knowing what that is for them. Like, what are those bad balls, essentially, that you're going to put away? And then you have your ability to then deal with a good ball in the different formats. Correct. Yeah, I love that. Simple thing. Yeah, very simple. I love that. Bowling, stop ball. Do you think that bowlers must just bowl at a target to get better at bowling a stock ball? Like, is it just practice that stock ball over and over? Yeah, stock ball, you have to see. You have, nowadays, people work a lot on the variation. They forget the stock ball. A stock ball is your port of refuge, like where you go back, mm. where you gather your stuff. Your old bowling spin is built around your stock ball, not your variation. And your stock ball is way, I told you, like almost six fielders are there. Yeah, the stock. yeah. So, probably you should have mastery, without mastery over your stock ball, off the terrain, swing, out, swing, whatever it is. You're not a good ball. You'll have all the variations in the world, but you're going to go for like 12 runs per over. You probably end up with a lot of wickets. But that's going to help, help your team, right? Yeah. You, you never know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 like, I like the idea of that. The the reason I ask is my sense, right, uh, is that I find, or let me rather put it like this. So let's say we play on a fast wicket or we play on a slow wicket. How do you think about a person's stock ball? Because on a quick, like let's say my stock ball is a way swinging full ball. Now on a slow wicket, that might be quite successful because... You know, I'm, I'm pitching the ball up. It's not that easy to drive. It's swinging away. But on a fast wicket, it could potentially be more risky. Um, yes. Stop yeah. ball doesn't, doesn't mean that you have to bowl the same length every ball. Okay. You could length ball on a fast wicket, on a slow wicket, on a green wicket, on a 10 drag is different. Okay. It's the length which you get. Yeah. You should be the mastery yeah. over that. That length, this is what I'm going to go back to. This is where I'm going to build my spell around. Keep practicing on different wickets, you will get to know. Like, probably if uh, my technology is like driving a bike, probably you mm -hmm. drive it 30, 40, you get more mileage. That's a sweet spot for that bike. 
But 30, 40 on the hills, when you drive over a hill, 30, 40 is not going to go anywhere. So the speed comes, drops a little bit. You have to adjust. Yeah. So stock ball is, are you referring then more to like what you do with a ball as your stock? Like I swing it away and then I can adjust my length on different wickets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. I misunderstood that initially. I thought you're speaking about the lines and the no, lengths no, no, too no, as the, the stock line, ball. It will be different for every wicket. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I can bowl a seam, yeah, then, I can't uh, bowl, yeah, left-hander, right-hander comes again. Yeah, no, so I so I enjoy that because, I mean, you often see in cricket, the they put out the pitch maps of where bowlers bowl, and what make the best the best is that ability to find the length on the wicket and stick to that. You know, that you would see them on, on the Wanderers as an example, where it's quick and bouncy. Yeah, they have their two-meter, their four-meter, their six-meter. Yeah. But if you're at the Wanderers, a lot of bowlers might be bowling that six to eight meter length where it's actually too short. You've got to be slightly fuller What's because of the point? bounce, because there's yeah. natural bounce there. If you go a little bit short, it just get, ends up over the stumps. It actually doesn't threaten the batters. Where then you might find a wicket. Where did I see one the other day? It was one of these wickets they played on now, uh, India and South Africa, that they played on. One of them, it was actually when you bowled slightly shorter, you were more... Uh, it was it, yeah, it was less easy to score off, and so the stock ball isn't to get good at the stock ball is good. Getting good at the shape you put on the ball, so that shape you can put, on the put ball. your six fielders in place, and that basically stems from that again stems from your awareness as a bowler. Mm. We talk about yeah, you play in Chennai, the length is different. Wangade, the chain length is different. Chinnasamy, the length is different. So the bowling goes starts. Sit with the bowler in the team meeting. They say, "Hey, this is where the batsman scored a lot of runs, and this is where this is the length where most runs are taken off." Yeah. So this is what happens. in a day's match. Probably yeah. it varies. Like in a day's match, probably we tend to find if we, if we are playing in a uh, ground which is near the seashore, post lunch, sorry, uh, post tea, most wickets fall. Then we find that length is, length should be slightly up during that spell. Fake wins. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I agree with that. So how how do you practice that? Do you because you and, and I suppose this when I was started asking these questions about this, because you see coaches sort of go put a cone down, hit the cone, but we're talking about them having a stock ball and then being able to bowl it on different lengths. So you probably when you see the coaches putting out the cones. Because actually, as a fielding coach, you go to put down the cones before all the team comes. I play and all the team comes at 3.30. I'll be at the ground both at one thirty, laying out the fielding batters, even this bowling lengths and all. So, there'll be yeah. three lengths set. Okay. Three, probably four lengths set out. So, the bowler tries to hit those lengths differently. Like one will be out, one will be uh, Yorker lengths and all. So, he's ready for all the yeah. lengths. Yeah. He's ready for all the lengths, yeah. At, at at sort of lower levels, you don't often see that, though. Do you think it's a good thing for younger cricketers to just practice hitting one length first so that they almost like I learn that control and then learn to adjust? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Once they're actually stabilized and they can get it, like, if I release from it, it's going to go there, then they yeah. can adjust. Not like, then they can them too much. Okay. See, because I lean a little bit the different way. I'm not disagreeing with their action um, stabilizing. I like that word. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with that. But what I enjoy doing is challenging their ability to control their length from a young age, because I think that's a skill like you get better at, just like you get better at bowling in a way swing and an in swing. So that understanding of how do I get the ball more full? How do I get it more short? So, so I I, pre I prefer to practice that too, even at a younger age, not just that sort of one length. But if during nets, I was talking about the pre-match routines. Do do during the nets or no, pre-match? No, so I would talk about like if I had a bowling session with a kid at a at oh, a, at then, a practice then session. Different, yeah. Then different. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I was, I was talking about the pre-match routine when we set the form. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, and 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 hey, that's it. That's the important thing to for coaches and parents and cricketers who listen to this to maybe a year is that they could be different things you practice at different times Correct. so what are you actually doing before a game you know what are you actually doing in practice before a game what are you doing when your skills are a little bit off the boil and you need to get better at some stuff or you need to go back to your 
your foundation or whatever you might want to call it, get back to your basics. Um, you know, and, 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 and so even if it's a misunderstanding between you and me, I think that's pretty cool because yeah, it yeah. shows that there's, that you've, so if we talk about knowing that you spoke about earlier, my sense is you've got to know that too. You've got to know yeah, yeah. how am I actually preparing for a game? Absolutely. Yes. Have you seen cricketers, um, this always fascinates me, like how they prepare. Have you seen some unique things cricketers do before before games? That's Late. a little bit different to what everybody else would do. Yeah. Uh, they want to early five balls in the end their, in their IPL season. That's five, six times. Yeah. Jack Kelly is five minutes next. Tuck, tuck, done. Then no more next. Done. Golden one bit. Perfectness. Ah, oh, dang, dang, yeah. dang. Rishabh, always like this one. Always like this one. You call sinners. Okay. King Williams. So he does in the match exactly like this. You have a lot of throwdowns, a lot of volume. People are different. Yeah, people are different. And and I, again, it it's uh, and it's the idea of knowing, right? It's the idea of knowing. Knowing yourself, what you want, what you need in order to go out there and perform at your best. Absolutely, yes. Biju, I've loved this conversation, and it was so cool to, so cool to connect with you finally, and and share some ideas and get you to sort of teach us some stuff about how you think about it. I'm learning, I'm learning. Yeah, we all are, eh? and I think that's the beauty of this. That's why I love having these conversations, and um. You know, some some conversations don't actually teach me that many things, but I've certainly written I've certainly <laughs> written a whole bunch of notes today. I've taken note. Um, the thing that stands out for me with this conversation is how clear I think you know what you're about and how clear you communicate that. You know, like from from simple like read, react, reflect. You know, like that's the game. You got to be able to read it, then react, and then reflect on what's busy happening. Um, I don't know. What did you get from this conversation? Is there anything that stands out for you? Like it was like yeah, thinking like how things are different, like how you look at things in a different way. Mm -hmm. Probably different way for different, but yeah, achieving the same end result. You, you and me, we are both concerned about the player holistically. Yeah, like how to get peak performance. It's about maximizing the potential. And when we talked about batting, like probably we talked about the most basic things. Like one one more thing about my 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 field of batting. Batting is always a reaction sport. You can only react to ball which is ball. Hypothetically, on a leg stump ball, unless you are a Vivian Richards or Sardin or somebody, you don't play cover drive. So you react to so what do you react to first? Do you react to the line or do you react to the length of the ball? The small question, like. Right? Good day, so I, like I always like to talk about talk to people who listen to cricket. I believe that, uh, for me the one of the biggest learning experience about battle was during the first IPL post COVID because we are all in a what do you call bubble. Oh, we can't all go out. I was sunrise was the bad that time. We are in Dubai. So post the match, so post the practice session, they wanna use to host a party in his room. If being a captain, like you suit room in a Dubai, you can have a beach of the regiment, how big your room is. But the discussion was always cricket and always technique. And I was lucky to witness and hear. And I used to bring notebook. I used to make fun of me. Georgie, you over here. Where's your wine glass? You're writing no notes. Because very rarely, in a place, you have a Kane Williams. You have a Johnny Barrister. You have a Brad Hodge. You have a Jason Holder. You have a Dave Warner talking cricket. To be a fly on the wall, eh? <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, and the that learning experience is huge. Like, I I used to, I always, like, I used to go up to ask Jack Callis, like, when I was take care of the coach, what he used to do. Or what was, I always used to love the way he unweighs himself. Uh, I used to talk to girls a bit about spin, how do you play the spin rolling. It's all about talking to people because they, at that level, they've done it. Mm. So I'm going to iterate their experience and try to simplify it and bring it down to my place. Yeah. 
I would watch yeah. him Akram symbol thing. Like he always used to tell me like, if I want the ball to go in, I used to load like this. If I want to go in, I used to load like this. Symbol thing mm. from a legend. Yeah, yeah. So these things matter. Like it's it's like all of us, you, me, probably the guys you are listening to, will one day at one time be privileged to overhear some conversation. What do you take away from that? It's very important. Is it just jargon or noise, or trying to get something from that? And the mm. more you decide that you're going to be a sponge rather than a rock, and the more you tend yourself, then you're the guy with the most inferior knowledge in a room. There is always space to learn and grow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that sums up sort of our conversation beautifully. You know, I think we danced around all of those sort of things that you mentioned yes, here through this conversation. I I really thank you for your time. I know. You were a little bit Pleasure. sick last week, and I know we're making this happen this week. Yeah, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your 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 contribution to cricket, where you are, you know, running the academy that you're running, as you said, like semi-free. Kids can come and go. I, yeah. I think that's I think that's a a very noble thing. I don't think there's a single place in South Africa that exists like that. Yeah, because like uh, I'm a Christian, the, the faith they, my faith teaches me to give. Mm. To be a serving leader rather than yeah. a bossy earning leader. Yeah. So my example is Christ uh, on the cross, and I'm happy for that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I hope we do this Bye, again because you mentioned something now right at this end of this conversation that I want to pick your brain about. But I'll I'll message you offline about that. <laughs> Otherwise, we might, we might just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, Biju. Cool. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Yeah, cheers.